Christmas and things. Keep that pumping. Keep it going, keep it going. You gotta make a fire step. Let me get some of these. That's hive number five. Five is alive. You know, I should have told them that if they oversmoke the hive, they might get the queen running all over the place, and it's harder to find it. But we're going to find the queen in this hive, I'm pretty sure. Jim Amrine directs his small beekeeping class on how to calm the bees. Smoke does the trick. Once the hive is settled down, the beekeeper can get to work. This colony died out last fall, and often you get a little bit of a fungus growth on the combs. Well, the bees will have that cleaned in about two days' time, and that'll be polished and clean, clean as a whistle. So they get rid of anything that's a problem right now. They clean it up, and uh, they take care of themselves about 98%, and the beekeepers get in the way once in a while. <laughs> Sometimes we can save the bees. Smoke is one of two ways beekeepers can avoid stings. Wearing protective gear is another, but you won't see Amrine in that. He's worked with honeybees for more than 30 years and developed a tolerance for the bee over time. Uh, you got stung once today, right? No, I got stung five times today. You didn't see them all, did you? No, I just remember you pointed to the I, I, I got stung once on there. I got stung two or three times around on my neck, but I didn't say anything about them. <laughs> but that's normal. I'm used to being stung all the time. Amrine says a bad day at work is when he's stung a hundred times. That's when he puts on protective gear. But most days, his approach is very hands-on. So the queen has been on this frame laying eggs. She lost her stinger. Now she can live about a week sometimes if that will heal up that little spot there where the stinger came out. But this is a very tiny hole and that can heal. So she's probably going to be okay. I'm going to stick her in with the other bees. Even though she stung somebody, I think she stung well. She got me too. Aren't you lucky, Will? Have you got one too, yeah, baby? It's a risk sometimes. I mean, if you're worried about being hypersensitive, you have to understand what's going on inside the body, and you have to understand um, what, how you might react yourself. But I think that if you trust the bees, um, chances are you won't get stung. Beekeeping in general has attracted a lot of attention this year. Colony collapse disorder is affecting the industry. No one is exactly sure why bees are leaving their hive and not returning. Amrine thinks it could have something to do with pesticides, but that's not the research he's focused on. Amrine is fighting mites. The past two years, uh, the varroa mites have become resistant to virtually all of the synthetic acaricides that we had available to keep them under control. And because of the resistance, their numbers are resurging, and so are many different pathogens, especially viruses, that affect the honeybees. Here is a varroa mite, right there at the end of my finger. Now this varroa mite has the potential of making all honeybees on Earth extinct. West Virginia experienced a mite infestation in the 1990s, which killed lots of honeybees. So it takes beekeepers like Jing Goff to keep the population alive in the state. But it's a challenge. Goff's already lost two hives this spring, one to mites and the other starved. Last year we had a uh, poor summer, which we enjoyed the heat. But with the heat, there's no nectar flow. So the, therefore the bees didn't have any uh, nectar to bring in to turn into honey, so we had to feed later on in the fall to even sustain what bees we did have. 
Now Goff feeds his bees honeybee healthy. It's a concoction that Amrine and a beekeeper in western Maryland developed after the mite infestation in the 1990s. And that is two of the essential oils, spearmint essential oil, which helps to fight the viruses and other pathogens. And the other essential oil is lemongrass. And that is an essential oil that has been used in Africa by Africans for over 60,000 years. Amrine mixes honeybee healthy with sugar water. He's seen a hive drink an entire quart in a few hours. This solution is supposed to keep the bees well fed and in good shape. Amrine also uses honeybee healthy when a hive is infested with mites. It'll stop flowing out. Amrine quickly spotted a mite no bigger than a pinhead in one hive at WVU. So he begins the treatment process. It involves jelly candies, formic acid, honeybee healthy, plastic wrap, and duct tape. This is a tape across there. See how valuable duct tape is? We can't do a thing around here without duct tape. Now, what is happening? The brood makes heat. The baby bees are always at 94 degrees Fahrenheit. They have to keep the brood at that temperature. That's called brood temperature. Well, that 94 degree air comes up, hits this formic pad, and causes it to be released and to evaporate. And now the bees are buzzing in this box. They're trying to get rid of all of that formic acid. Right now it's easy because we've got everything still stacked here, but but this plastic will stop the formic from getting any higher. And we can go ahead and put this box right over this. The candy is soft, and if it's too close there, it'll just push it down just a little bit. That's one reason we use that candy, so I'll show you. If, as I put that next super on, if I squeeze it down a little bit, it won't hurt that candy a bit. The bees will eat up the candy, just like I do, like that. This will be very inexpensive for the guys that are losing thousands of beehives right now. And they're losing the beehives because the mites are in there in low numbers, and the mites carry viruses that mess up the bees' minds, mess up their behavior, mess up their clustering, mess up their foraging and their navigation. And they just go out and never come back. Amron says this treatment should kill more than 90% of the mites. But formic acid can be harmful if it gets into your eyes or on your skin or is inhaled. So beekeepers who use it must take precautions. I applied the formic acid this morning and put it into this bag. Some plastic bags weep and the formic will come right through. You've got to be sure you're using the right kind of plastic. This plastic holds it. State bee inspectors do not support the use of formic acid, but they encourage Amrine's work and research. That's what we do to save the bees. And we have helped beekeepers in Florida the last uh, year to save several hundred beehives. And one beekeeper in December took off a lot of honey. He said it was the best honey harvest in 10 years. And he said he's got the best bees he's had in 10 years. The Florida Beekeepers Association named Amrine Researcher of the Year in 2006. They are using our methods and then they use our formic acid methods to kill the varroa mites. We had developed a wooden frame that we called the formic acid fumigator, but we've replaced that. As you can see, the treatment we did is a replacement for that, just using a paper pad that sits on the candy and then we cover it over with a plastic wrap. That's all we need to do to kill all the varroa mites in that hive. Bees in general are valuable. They pollinate about 30% of our food supply. And honeybees in particular provide another benefit. If you're a person that suffers from allergies, well, one of the things you can do is get some honey that is produced during the time of your allergy and be sure you've got lots of pollen in that honey and eat a spoonful of it every day and you will have greater immunity to those plants that are in those honeys at that time. We learned during our interview that the sting of a bee is not the only thing Amrine has taught his body to tolerate. And I eat poison ivy so I stay immune to that. Poison ivy. A little bit of vinegar and oil is not bad. You usually eat it just plain like that? I do now, uh -huh. but I've had to work up to it. It took me several years to get to that level. I used to get it blisters head to toe from that. Yeah. And now I don't get any poison ivy at all. I could grip all of that off of that tree, roots and everything. Wow. Not a bump, not a bump. We'll take his word on it.